Hi, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. Today I'm going to do another shelf spotlight and for today I thought I would do the books that fit in the August prompt of Chantel's Read Your Bookshelf Challenge that I'm doing for this year. So the August prompt is a book with a body part in the title. So this, I have only have five books to talk about today because I thought, I debated about this, is, is the heart considered a body part? Yes, because I mean, you're not going to live without your heart. So your body can't function without your heart. However, when I think of body parts, I'm thinking eyes arms, hands, feet, legs. I don't really think of my heart as a body part, I'm, but it is, right? But so then I went through my list and kind of had everything where I had some sort of body part in the title. And there's a couple books I'm not going to talk about because I either don't have them anymore or I didn't really enjoy them that I'm not going to recommend them to you. And so I'm not including heart on the list because otherwise my list would get quite long. So it was like, do I talk about five books or do I talk about 15 books <laughs> or more? So I thought, let's just talk about five. And so that's, I thought maybe, maybe later on, like, I don't know, maybe in February, I could do heart in the title or love in the title and kind of put the heart in there. So I decided to leave those ones off for today. So I'm going to start with the only book that I have not read that is on my TBR shelf that has a body part in the title. And again, this doesn't really, isn't really a body part either because it's just body. So this is Over My A Dead Body by Sandra Orchard. Um, this book was given to me from my mom. And it is book three of the Serena Jones mystery series. It is a suspense mystery. <laughs> um, FBI Special Agent Serena Jones arrives at Martha's Vineyard with her family, ready for a bit of R&R. &R and a lot of reminiscing as they celebrate the engagement of an old family friend. But when a suspicious death tied to an antiques smuggling ring interrupts her per perfect, her picture perfect trip, she's soon entangled in the investigation. Propelled into danger, Serena must stay the course and solve this case before anyone else dies. But just how is she supposed to do that when the two men in her life arrive on the scene bringing with them a boatload of romantic complications and even a secret or two. So as I said, this is book number three of the series. I do have all three books in the series now. So at some point, I hope to be able to read this. I have, don't think I've ever read anything by Sandra Orchard. I'm not really sure. Um, but she's a Canadian author, so that makes me kind of excited to read it. And my mom said she really enjoyed these books, so that's why I've got them. So that is the only one on my TBR that I have not read that has body in the title. Not really a body part. So then the other four that I have read. So the first one is Head in the Clouds by Karen Whitmire. So I just reread this one this month. Um, so I will be talking about it in my July wrap up. It is a historical romance set in central Texas. Adelaide arrives in town after impulse action did not turn out the way she planned. So she ends up getting a job working for Gideon as a governess for a young girl, Isabella, that he has taken in. Shortly after arriving at Gideon's ranch, they learn that Isabella's uncle is dangerous and is out to get Isabella's inheritance at any cost. Gideon and Adelaide must work together to protect Isabella from her evil uncle and a romance blooms. 
There were parts of the story that did feel a little far-fetched at times, but overall I enjoyed the way the story flowed and that there was a strong faith message about turning to God for guidance before acting. I gave this book four stars as I enjoyed the character development and the relationship between the various characters, including the secondary characters. It just felt like I was right on this ranch in Texas with them back in the 1800s. And just kind of the, the quickly formed family, Gideon, Adelaide, and little Isabella, just, it was cute. And I really enjoyed this story. So the third book that I'm going to mention is Safe in His Arms by Melanie D. Snyker. So the body part, an arm. This is a contemporary romance. I read this back in February and I rated it four stars. For some reason, I was not expecting to like this book as much as I did. Anna arrives in town on the run from an ex-boyfriend with barely any funds. She needs to find a job and a place to live and ends up meeting Joel, a local diner owner. She is hesitant to share much about herself due to her past experiences with men. But Joel does not push for details and allows her to share as she feels comfortable. When Anna's ex-boyfriend arrives in town, her new life is put in jeopardy, and Joel must decide if he is going to fight for Anna's protection. I loved the way the romance developed slowly, and the friendship between the various characters made me want to be a part of this group. I just recently picked up book two of this series, which is called Someone to Trust, and features two of the friends that were in book one. I am looking forward to reading this book and catching up with the characters once again. Okay, so the next book I'm going to talk about is An Eye for an Eye by Irene Hannon. So the body part is an eye. This is a romantic suspense and it is book two of the series of the Heroes of Quantico. It is an older book and it came out in 2009. The summary says, after he accidentally shoots a teenager at a tense standoff, FBI hostage rescue team member Mark is sent to St. Louis to work as a field agent and get his bearings while the bad press starts to settle. Just weeks away from returning to Quantico to resume his work on the hostage rescue team, Mark has a chance encounter with an old flame, Emily. But the reunion is cut short by a sniper. Now, Mark must find the shooter before he tries to strike again. But what is his motive? And who was his intended target? Can Mark put the pieces together, keep Emily safe, and rekindle a long-dead relationship at the same time? So after the shooting incident, the police are left to figure out whether it was Mark or Emily who was the target. As readers, we find out early on who was the intended target, and as you get deeper into the story, you find out why. The police, however, have very few leads to go on, and you begin to wonder if they will ever be able to piece the clues together and find the person that's responsible. I felt the story moved at a good pace and accurately showed the time it takes to work a case. So then the last book that I have to mention is More Than Meets the Eye by Karen Whitmire. So again, the body part is an eye. This is an historical fiction and is book one of the series, The Patchwork Family. This is a story of love, forgiveness, and learning to overcome challenges. It is presented as a historical romance that also includes a mystery that requires digging into clues, elements of danger, and drama. As much as the suspense kept me intrigued, it was the personal relationships that captured me. Evie, Seth, and Zach are three individuals who were orphaned at a young age and met by chance years ago. They end up forming their own family, and the bond between these three was wonderful. They were loyal to one another, supporting and looking out for each other. At times, their actions might seem overbearing, but when push comes to shove, they did whatever they could for one another. Evie was easy to love. Even though she's endured many hurts, she remains optimistic and treats others with kindness. This is how she approaches Logan, the stranger that purchases the property beside her family. She continues to treat him with kindness, 
even when she finds out he is hiding something from her. Logan came to town with one motive in mind, but after meeting Evie, things became complicated for him. Will he follow through with his plan? How does meeting Evie change his plan? I loved the interactions between Evie and Logan. There was a connection between them from their first meeting that only grew stronger the more time they spent together. I found it easy to cheer for these two, wanting them to establish a future together. There was also a second budding romance that I was not expecting, but I loved that we got to experience a part of it. So those are the five books that I own and have read. Four of the five I have read. And so really, this is the only one I have left to read, but because, I mean, I've read, I've already filled this prompt for the bookshelf challenge, but because I read Safe in His Arms and Head in the Clouds this year already, so I have July marked off. So I don't have to read this this year, but if I can get it, that would be awesome. So... Are any of these books interesting to you? Are you doing this bookshelf challenge? I I found it enjoyable to kind of kind of find a book that fits this prompt and can I follow through with this challenge the whole year? I guess we will find out. I want to thank you for joining me today and I'd love to chat with you in the comments below. So let me know what book you're most excited or your favorite book that has a body part in the title. Thank you. Bye.